Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a previous video, which I'll link to up here, I made a small retro gaming system out of an old tablet running an emulator and a projector. Now in the comments, someone suggested that I use a Raspberry Pi instead. And I realized I've never actually used a Raspberry Pi, and I've never really played around with one. I have some experience with the Linux operating system, and I've played around a little bit with some embedded PCs, but I've never used that particular device. Now this generous commenter also offered to give me some of his old ones, and I took him up on it. So thank you, Eats Too Much Jam. It's really appreciated. Now I started looking online to see what can you do with these Raspberry Pis, and there's a lot of things you can do. And so I went a little nuts, and I started ordering some sensors, and a screen, and a RTL SDR. All of this stuff together was surprisingly cheap. I think you can get the screens for like $30 and the little RTL for about $10. So not all of this is strictly save it for parts, but I'm gonna see what can I build out of all this stuff and these donated Raspberry Pis. Now since I am completely new to this Raspberry Pi thing, I've just gone to their website and started following the instructions for how to set this thing up. I found a micro SD card to load in here for the operating system. So I'm going to download that and see if I can find a monitor and a keyboard that will interface with this. Alright, I've got a little battery pack for this. And I've got a keyboard. And I realize the only video device I have that's HDMI is this Pico projector from the gaming system. All of my computer monitors are stuck in the early 2000s, and they're all VGA. So I'm going to have to use this little projector and just project it onto a sheet of paper or something for the moment. Eventually, I think I can just do everything with a console onto this, but uh, we'll see what happens with that. All right. Am I using a piece of paper taped to a real monitor as my monitor? Yes. Yes, I am. Is this incredibly silly? Yes, it is. But it's actually working, even though it might be one of the more redneck ways to adapt an HDMI signal onto a VGA monitor. So I don't want to be tied to this projector forever. So my next toy is going to be this little touch screen. And this apparently just clips onto the top of the Pi, and then there's um, some kind of driver you have to download and a little bit of procedure to set it up. But that will make this more of a portable device when combined with that battery pack. And what I'm hoping to do with some of these sensors is to have a bit of a portable diagnostic or scanning system. But uh, we'll see what we can come up with. So for the TFT drivers, I'm just following along a guide online and hoping that I get it right. It's a little hard to see on this projector screen, so I can barely make out what it's returning when I type in console commands. Now it's asking me if I want capacitive or resistive drivers. This thing doesn't actually say, but I think the more modern ones say cap touch instead of just touch, so I'm going to assume this one is resistive and go with that. All right, let's plug this in and see what happens. So now I think I am supposed to calibrate the touch screen. So I'm just going to follow the instructions online for that, and then we'll move on to adding some kind of sensors to this. So this little USB device that I just plugged in is called an SDR, or a Software Defined Radio. Originally this was supposed to be a digital TV tuner, but some hacker discovered that they're so poorly made that they tune pretty much everything. And so you can use the right software to use these as a very wide range radio receiver. Everything from AM radio all the way up to microwave and a lot of things in between. So I'm hoping to use this as kind of a portable scanner and spectrum analyzer. And I'm using some guides that I found online for how to do this. Alright, I've downloaded some drivers for this SDR dongle. And I've downloaded a Python script that is supposed to act as a spectrum analyzer. So let's see if it runs. And it doesn't run. I think I mistyped something, but this screen is so hard to see. Let's try this again. Well, it's doing something. That's cool. Now I'm running into a couple problems with this little guy. It does freeze occasionally, 
It's been freezing when I try to shut down, and it did freeze when I ran that SDR frequency analyzer program. And in addition, I'm not getting any audio out of the 3.5 millimeter jack. I know it's not supposed to be a headphone jack, but most people say it will work with earbuds. I'm not getting anything out of it either as a line input to my computer or in the earbuds. So I'm going to try the other Raspberry Pi that I was given. I think it's the same model. I think it's all the same hardware. So if I'm guessing correctly, I can just swap my mini SD card and all of my hardware onto that board and it should run hopefully better than this one, but it, it should run without any major changes. All right, it seems like the audio is working better on this board. And now my touchscreen is no longer working again. So maybe I have to go back and recalibrate that. All right, well, this touchscreen is still pretty flaky. I'm not sure what happened. I think there was an error downloading one of those code repositories, but that little screen is so tiny that I can't really read anything that it's putting out into the console. It's way easier to read on the camera, so I either need to get a bigger TFT screen, or hook up that projector again, or just use my camera as a magnifier for my tired old man eyes. All right, I am now trying a different TFT screen that I got. This one is slightly larger, and it doesn't have the same pinouts as the other one for adding extra accessories. So I'm not sure if I want to keep using this or not. So now I have messed this system up so badly that neither of the TFT screens work, and on HDMI it will not boot into the graphical X interface. Fortunately, I was able to force a console, and I've got my HDMI projector set up again. So I think I'm going to need to go back in, change that frame buffer setting back to the way it was, reinstall the drivers for the Adafruit Pi TFT, and then hope everything works again. Now this is pretty much what happens to me anytime I try to do anything complicated with Linux. I end up uh, sucked down a rabbit hole of dependencies and programming language installations and repositories that don't actually exist and trying to follow guides online is great, but sometimes those guides are from five years ago, and the links that they reference and the drivers that they reference aren't in the same place, and so not everything works every time. And then, of course, there's just my own incompetence, where I go in and start changing settings without really understanding what they do, and so I get myself stuck in some place. Okay, so we're back to that original Pi TFT, and we're running GQRX as our spectrum analyzer on the RTL SDR. And unfortunately, I am not getting any audio out of this thing. There was a brief time when I was able to hear audio from YouTube and other websites on the headphone jack, but I seem to have broken that or overloaded it somehow because there's no more audio out of the headphone jack, no matter what I do. So I might have to get a USB sound card or figure out if there's such a thing as an HDMI speaker, or get audio out of this in some other way so I can actually listen to the radio that I'm picking up. This is a local FM broadcast station. You can see the FM uh, frequency here, and I can change my input frequency. So here we've got a NOAA weather radio broadcast, and this is close to the marine VHF band. So that's a narrow FM broadcast versus wide FM that we saw on 93.7. And here I've jumped up into the 800 megahertz range, and we are seeing trunked public safety traffic. We're seeing a variety of action on different frequencies as the trunking system jumps around. This is probably a control frequency that's controlling the talk groups and then these are individual talk frequencies where police, fire, EMS, etc. are having radio conversations and those tend to jump around as the trunking system assigns open frequencies to different radios. I don't have a way to actually listen to these at the moment. Apparently to listen to a trunked frequency you need two of these SDR units so that you can listen to the control channel 
and the talk channels simultaneously. And then you need some additional drivers and software to decode the trunking system and the talk groups. It's still kind of interesting to see the activity on the radio bandwidth and see these different uh, frequencies being activated as different users start talking on the system. All right, so it's interesting to look at the public safety and other scanner frequencies, at least in visual mode. But let's see if this can tell us anything interesting about my own radio. I've got a CB handheld here, and I'd be interested to see what a CB transmission looks like in the frequency spread and any side harmonics. So I'm going to go ahead and tune this to channel 14, set my CB handheld to 14, and see what that looks like on the spectrum analysis. And I'm going to go ahead and key the mic now. Now you'll notice there's a little delay between me keying and the SDR picking it up. And that's probably due to some processing delays through the system here. It's a little hard to see on this screen, but you can see that there's a main transmission, and then there's a couple of these side harmonics where it's bleeding over onto nearby frequencies. All right, let's try another radio band. I've got my cheap Walmart special FRS radio, which is in the UHF or 400 megahertz band. We'll tune the SDR into that, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so here's a transmission in the FRS band. And again, you can see there's a little delay between me pushing the button and it showing up on the SDR. And you can also see there's this main center frequency and then these side harmonics. So these little cheap radios are fairly dirty in the RF spectrum, and they bleed over onto other nearby frequencies, at least in close range. So next up, I have this little thermal sensor, and this is something like a FLIR camera or infrared camera where it sees heat instead of visual light. Now, a real version of this is pretty expensive, but I was able to pick up this small version, which is very low resolution, for pretty cheap. I'm going to dig around in some of my old computers and see if I can find some jumper cables with the right ends on them to go from the pins on the Pi to the pins on the sensor board. Alright, I seem to have done something terribly wrong with my jumper wires because the Pi is not booting anymore. So instead of having those individual wires go to the connector, I'm going to look for a ribbon cable and see if I can hack that in there instead for maybe a more secure connection. Okay, so this is definitely the wrong way to use an IDE hard drive connector. It really doesn't work this way with a continuity meter because all this stuff kind of connects to some extent, so I just get various resistances across all these wires. I can't use this stuff. I've found yet another cable that I'm trying to rob little jumper pins out of. So hopefully I can get this connected up in a way that still makes the TFT work and makes the little thermal sensor work and doesn't destroy the pie somehow. So this could be one of my problems right now. I seem to have physically broken my SD card. I don't actually know how I did that, if it was already damaged, or if I klutz fingered the thing, or slammed it down on the table somehow, but I have cracked my SD card, so I have no operating system at the moment. So, back to the OS installer. All right, this time I'm backing up my progress so far. So if I kill that SD card, I can load this image onto another one and not have to go through reinstalling all that stuff again. All right, I have waded through all the dependencies for the Python libraries on this little thermal sensor, and I've wired it up, hopefully correctly. So let's plug in the Pi and see if we let out the magic blue smoke. And something is... Still not installed correctly.
So the online guide for this little dealie is not the most straightforward, and it's basically this giant rabbit hole of dependencies where each link you click has three other links you have to follow first. All right, I forgot that there are two Python versions installed on this thing, and I have to do everything with Python 3, where the uh, instructions say to use Python. So now I'm getting some pixels out of that thing. Alrighty, we have a thermal thing now. Um, one of the better videos for how to do this AMG 8833 thermal sensor is from a YouTuber called Piddler in the Root, and I'll throw a link up to his video. And then there's some other online resources that are uh, various degrees of useful in how to do these um, thermal cameras. And I'll try to throw some links in the description for those. So next I need a case for this little sensor arrangement. And I don't have a good dry box that fits, but I have this uh, kind of Tupperware thing. So we're going to hack it into this for now and wait until I order a real dry box and some more sensors. And we might end up doing a follow-up video when it looks a little nicer. But for now, we're going to throw it in this thing. All right, I've got everything crammed into this Tupperware poorly. And I've got my sensor peeking out the top. I've got my antenna. And I think I have made the world's first redneck tricorder. So um, I guess let's go see if this does stuff. So we're picking up some strange alien creatures. Captain, we're picking up a Klingon trailer park off the port bow. We're receiving some sort of primitive communication. I am now performing a CAT scan. All right, so I think I'm getting close to the end of what's going to be part one of this little tricorder handheld sensor project. So far, the only real sensors I have are this radio receiver and this thermal camera, which is pretty cool, but mildly incomprehensible without some kind of temperature scale. So I need to work on getting some different code or writing some code, if I can remember any scripting languages, to display some kind of a scale or temperature readout. I can also pull up things like the weather radar, but that kind of stuff you can do on any old smartphone. I've also ordered a few other sensors, such as a barometer and a temperature and humidity sensor, as well as a small GPS unit. And again, a lot of these features are included in modern smartphones, but I think it'd be fun to throw these into my little handheld scanner try to integrate them somehow into a single sensor package and have some kind of a nice interface that lets me wander around and scan the environment around me. Whether that will end up looking nice or end up looking like redneck trash remains to be seen. Now since I ordered all of those parts from overseas and shipping usually takes a few months, the next video is probably not going to come out for a while. But once I get all those sensors and have some more time to throw them together and play with this pie, then I will have the follow-up video. So please go ahead and subscribe if you want to see that one when it comes out. And like this video if you enjoyed it. And check out my other videos. I don't do a lot of electronics, but I do some occasionally. And I do a lot of boats and potato guns and other stuff, so take a look at those. And then I'll just leave you to enjoy this nice thermal view of my cup of tea. Thanks for watching.